to another episode of Boosted Rolls, a War Machine and Hordes podcast focused on EU meta, tournaments, and tactics. My name is Tomasz, and I play Circle. Hi guys, I'm Simon, and I'm going to be streaming on Twitch from October 14th. More details to follow. Today we're joined by a special guest. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Christian. I play Protectorate, and I also play on Team Norway Moonin. For those who have been under a rock for the last week and a half, um, just recently won the WGC. So, you know, just a little tournament, not too important. <laughs> a detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A yeah. little, little, little thing. Um, so, as, uh, as we mentioned before the, before the show started, um, I'd like to start with a few questions that we're asking each of you, and, um, and we'll just see where that takes us. So, let's jump right into it. One year ago, last WGC, were you playing? Um, was it for the same team? Were you playing the same faction? Um, and how did, how did it go for you? So, yes to all your questions. <laughs> uh, same team. Uh, of course, there were some differences in, uh, in who was in the teams, but I was still on Moonin. I've been on Moonin for as long as Moonin has been a team. Um, Which is? Uh, three years now. I think three we changed okay. our names when we started like really going for the VTC, like actually trying. <laughs> uh, I played Protectorate since I started playing War Machine for like four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and last year I played Testament with Zealot Spams, and I played Serenia with Idrians and uh, Paladin Boat. Okay, okay, that's a cool, uh, cool little uh, composition. And what? <laughs> uh, how were your results last year? How did you do? Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year was a year when I moved, was sick, had two jobs, and recently got promoted on one of my jobs. So I really didn't have the time for preparations. And you really felt that? Okay. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and you mentioned um, Sirenia and uh, Zealot Spam. Testament and this year, of Manoth, yeah. Testament of Manoth, that was it. Um, and this year you had Sirenia and... Vlad 3. Vlad 3. Um, and I guess your Sirenia list changed quite a bit, but we'll come on to that a little bit later on. Yeah. All right, so tell me something about your travel. Like, was it easy to get there? Uh, have you planned to have some games in advance uh, to warm up before WTC, or you just rushed there last minute? Uh, tell me all about it. So from Oslo to Belgium, it's not that far, luckily. Uh, only like a two-hour uh, flight. Uh, we went to uh, to Brussels on Thursday night, uh, stayed there at the hotel, got some beers and I think we were almost all the Norwegian guys there at the same time. Uh, really nice. And then on Friday morning, we went to uh, to Blankenberg to meet up with uh, everybody else and uh, got in some, some last-minute practice games. So I played, funnily enough, three games against Grimkin uh, before the WTC. And how did you do? Well, it was uh, fine. Uh, I, I don't know how much I should get into it, but I, I created the Vlad list to be a Grimkin drop. Uh, so the first two games were really good, and then the third game, I learned some new rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, because in our episode, when we talk with Simon uh, about our experiences, my last minute games uh, were the ones that I really needed to try for, for the tournament. And I've picked, for example, Scorn that I was worried about. So was yeah. the Grimkin, like, it, was it your plan to get some games in? Because I know Juan is your, in your meta, so you could get a lot of Grimkin games uh, during preparations. Yeah. Why did you pick Grimkins three times? It's mostly because uh, that's the list I played the least against, even though I have one and I have some other Grimkin players, uh, the couple of months before VTC, things slow down and everybody wants to play against Grimkin since they are, uh, I, I want to call them a boogeyman. So it's not that I could play that many games against them. So so I use that day to get like the last minute games in before starting. All right. All right. So in the matchup process, uh, after those games and with your experience, uh, did you try to avoid any particular factions, uh, like maybe Grimkins or any other? Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to talk a bit more about my matchups and, and thoughts later. But yeah, it's, right. it's mostly, I think in my head it was, I don't want to meet Grimkin. I don't want to meet, to meet Crucible Guard. And I also don't really like like Scar One Eight Stalkers. That just that's not fun to play against. Oh, all right, let's. I mean, while while we're on it, let, let's get into it. So, give me the more specifics of your pairing. So, you've got Serenia. What are you running with Serenia? Uh, so my Serenia list is a double Dervish and a Sanctifier uh, uh, with the Hierophant, and then we have the the Avatar of Menoth, 
uh, which is really good now, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, and then the, the typical Faithful Masses build. So I have like double champion uh, of the Order of the Wall, uh, double Kiki Monks. Uh, I have the Covenant of Menoth, Hand of Silence, uh, the Rack, only one of them, uh, the new toys, uh, double Manite Archons, uh, Choir of Menoth, and of course, three units of free Initiates of the Wall. Mm -hmm. It really does sound like a Harbinger list to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the first thing that jumps out for me is Avatar of Menot with Gaze and the Rockwall. Sounds really strong. It is. <laughs> uh, is there anything else that uh, I might have missed? Any strong tricks within the list? Uh, on top of that, you add Inviable Resolve to the Avatar, uh, which makes it Arm 23 if you actually can go past the wall. Uh, which also stops it from being slammed and pushed. So you, you stop a lot of those shenanigans. Um, as well as having positive charge and dash. I think those are like the surprises that uh, for people who are used to playing against Harvey, uh, that's a big difference in, in the play style and how the lists actually play, even though we have mostly the same models. Right, they don't factor in the plus two, plus two. Yeah, on, on like everything in my army has plus two, plus two. So even the, the initiates or the monks, which are usually not used to punch with, now they actually do hurt. Right, right. Okay. And just just for my uh, curiosity, how is a Serenia Harbinger mirror match? It's, uh, it's a bit favored Serenia, actually, just because of the positive charge, uh, as well as uh, if I get a good feat with Serenia, my Archons threaten 18 inches. And if you're a Harvey player, you should be really scared of the Archons. <laughs> I think if you're an any one player, you should be scared of the Archons. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> especially Harvey. Yeah. Christian, tell us about your second list. What it is and why did you choose it? Uh, so my second list was uh, Vlad III uh, in the Wars of the Old Faith. Uh, I think it's a fairly typical uh, version of it. It's still kind of a new theme, so the, the perfect list hasn't been created. Uh, but it puts a smile on people's faces, and it's uh, it's it's a scary list. So it has Vlad, of course, with Adjudicator, uh, double champions of the Order of the Wall, uh, I have the Hand of Silence, uh, a Man of War Dracoon, and then I have Yuri the Axe, I Paladin Vilman, uh, Fenris, double Manite Archons, Hermit, Choir, and one unit of Initiates of the Wall. One unit? Just one unit, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this list was created to deal with uh, Harby and deal with Grimkin. So a lot of, uh, of uh, Grievous Wounds and a lot of hit and run tactics. Oh, fair enough. And how did you find that that went in your training? Uh, so the fun thing is that I play this list a couple of months now, and as I said, it was my Harby drop. Uh, but then I found out more and more that Serenia was actually much better into Harbi, uh, and especially considering the amounts of Judicators out, uh, out uh, with the uh, Harbi lists. Uh, and as I told you guys in the beginning, uh, it turned out not to be a really great Grimkin drop after all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, one question that sort of springs to my mind is that uh, I'm assuming that you're playing Serenia because you're playing in a, a team that has two Menoth players and the other one has already taken Harvey. But now it occurs to me, given that you, you like Serenia and you were playing her last year and you even favor her in the mirror, that you may have actually picked Serenia even if you were the only Menoth. Is that the case? That's a great question. Yeah, you're, you're 100%. Uh, I had some uh, internal monologues with myself about what would happen if Cuba ended up Mercs because in Mercs because I know my team wants to bring the good stuff and Harvey is of course like a massive overpowered monster but yeah I, I would definitely want to play Serena I, I would have given the the team real arguments for why I wanted to play Serena instead of Harvey hit, hit me with those reasons let's hear them uh, first of all she doesn't ha really have any weaknesses that's a hell of a statement <laughs> yeah and, and, and I'll tell you <laughs> a while later but she doesn't really have any weaknesses uh, she's kind of dark horsey because you, you as you said, you, you see the list and you think it's a bad Harvey list. Uh, and also it's it's more my play style. I don't like uh, people to get an out, like having Harvey assassinated is the worst feeling ever. With this list, she's a small caster with high defense who can hide behind everything. And uh, and with the feet, like the, the big difference between her feet and all 
is that her feet only works on living and she has to be inside of them hitting stuff. But Serenia, she just has to stay 12 inches behind the, the model that is fitted on. And it's you do it on the most important turn and then, yeah. It should be okay. Yeah, I mean, the, I'd say the other big difference is that one of them lasts for one turn, the other one lasts for seven, right? But admittedly, on one of those turns, nothing's happening. And as you say, on the most important turn, the, the defensive feat is active. Uh, and, it's, and it's more active than ore is. Yeah. Um, but to suggest that those are favorably comparable for Serenia, that's an interesting claim. Is, is that what you're claiming? You'd rather have the Serenia feat than ore? If I offered uh... for you to have your Serenia list, but instead of having your feet, you had... Harby's feet and you had ore instead I think it, it comes down to, to, to play style really uh, at, at this level uh, I think they're so comparable in what they do that having a list that's a bit more flexible into everything compared to like the really good caster that Harby is that can play she can auto win in some matchups but I think Serenia doesn't have that many like plus two uh, matchups, but she has a lot more plus one matchups. Everything is playable with this list. And I think in a BTC uh, team composition, it's really important to have those uh, type of lists in your pairing. I really agree. I think if that's, if what you say is true, um, and we'll go on to speak about it more, as you said, but if it is, then um, then that's a real real strong argument for taking Serenia. So that's cool. All right, thanks for that, man. I appreciate it. Good question, man. So I have a question before we move on. Go, go. Would you pair Serenia with Harbinger if the Kuba was playing Mercs? <laughs> uh, I've gotten that question uh, a bit now after, after VTC. I don't think so, because the bad matchups are still kind of like... Again, I don't like Crucible Guard, I don't like Crimkin, I don't like a lot of Stalkers. And, and the same is, uh, can be said about Harby as well. So I don't think they complement each other really well. All right, all right. All right, cool. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, how much prep did you get this year? How many games? Uh, I don't really count because I think sure, I'll be sure. sad I'm like if I... <laughs> Uh, I would say, since I've played Serenia for like almost two years now on and off again, but this version of Serenia uh, with Archons, maybe 40, 50 times, and around the same thing without Archons before they came. So like when we went to Lune, I played uh, Serenia without Archons. So around 100 games with Serenia, and I will want to say 20 games with Vlad, maybe? Only 20? Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, my dogs were just going mental for a second there. I had to mute the uh, microphone. They couldn't believe it either. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think if that dog has an understanding of anything other than uh, going for a walk, I'll be impressed with it. Um, <laughs> it is not the most intelligent dog in the world. Right. Um, and so I'm assuming with that amount of games that you felt pretty well prepared going in. I think you never can feel really well prepared. Uh, I, I felt much more confident this year than I did last year and, and the year before that, uh, of course. Uh, done really well. My uh, like People were really scared of my list. So, so I, was, I was feeling as prepared as I could be. But I could always have played another, another 100 games to be more prepared. Okay. How much did you feel the same way? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's actually the story of my life. I never feel fully prepared. I, I could always use an extra game or two before the tournament starts. I could always use an extra minute or two before the game starts to think it through. I could always use an extra dojo with friends to pick some details about the matchup I'm going to play. But the thing is, in WTC, you just need to feel as comfortable as you can be into matchups you don't mind playing, because in WTC format you can dodge. Uh, so if you are playing things that you don't want to play, it probably means that there is a particular team that's very strong against your team, or you've made a mistake building the team, or uh, your captain just made a mistake during matchup process. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, well, I don't know. What that's, that's interesting to hear you both say that because I felt fairly well prepared going in. Like I felt like I'd I'd put in enough games during the year, I'd attended enough events, I knew enough about the the international matter that I was like, right, I, I feel like I have a good grip of this, and I'd, I'd chosen my pairing in advance, a long time in advance. I'd stuck to my um, 
choice the best I could. And obviously I'd made tweaks to the list, but I'd played it played both my lists a hell of a lot um and then i'd gone into a, a training villa the week before and played a, you know as many games as i wanted to but made sure i you know built in like a half rest day and and then i walked in feeling really really good about it so i'm i'm um i'm interested to hear that you know you both agree and seem to think that a lot of other people agree that you know you can never have enough preparation i i sort of felt yeah. i felt decent i felt all right it might be just the difference of character it might be that uh some people are always cautious and when you say uh, ready and prepared, what do you really mean? Like, do you mean that you are going to do 6-0? Or do you mean... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I, I see what you mean. I have a different sort of, maybe... A, um... I'm, 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 you mentioned earlier, I can't remember whether it was in this episode or the previous one that, you know, some people, when they talk about matchups can be quite pessimistic or optimistic. And I'm certainly pessimistic in the, in the planning stages, but then once we get in the game, I sort of give it my all. Um, and I just meant that I felt like I had done enough. I, I would feel regardless of what my results were, I would feel like I put enough effort and preparation in yep. and that I would not, you know, regardless of how the results were, I could walk away from that event saying, yep, I, I, I trained enough. I prepared enough. I, I did enough where I'm happy with myself. Um, of course, I mean, I agree with you that I could play another hundred games and probably be a little better at the game, but um, how was your impression of Belgium? Um, I don't, I guess you'd been there before. Cause I think you said you've been going for three years. So you've, you've already been there once, but what did you think about the, the organization, the, um, the WCC sort of, uh, side of things, the judging, the venue, the food, what, what gives you thoughts? I have nothing but massive respect for the guys that did this. Uh, it was flawless. Uh, the dinner was great. Uh, the venue was like having that many people at the same place at the same time. Uh, create like it, it takes mad organizational skills and if there's something like the, the bed wasn't as good as i wanted or or something like that it, it's for me it's just a detail uh so we could have been almost anywhere as long as uh the tournament is organized as well it, it was and everybody is having a good time then yeah they, they did a great job I'm, I'm really happy to i was really happy to to be at the same place uh, as we were two years ago man I, I was so tired every night i could have slept on a bed of nettles <laughs> uh, I, I genuinely don't remember if I slept on the floor or on a cloud. I have no idea. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, but I absolutely said that. That's only a joke. I absolutely take all of what you said on board. Um, I, and I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Yeah, we couldn't, I have nothing to, to add to them. It was, it was super great. The judging was good. Uh, organization were good. Uh, of course, the guys from uh, Moose Machine doing the, the streams really good guys I, it, it was a perfect weekend yeah little shout out there actually um, if you're listening I, I have no idea if he's a listener but um, uh, I, I don't even know the gentleman's name do any of you know Moose Machine's real name oh I should oh. I'm so bad at names I'm really terrible at names um, and I'm even worse at nicknames so I'm really surprised I remembered that but um, a massive thank you to uh, the people that organized and donated to the the cause to be able to get the streaming here this year and to the guy that actually came set everything up like apparently he had to do like sound blueprints for the room based on like room plans in advance without actually being able to see the room setting up all the wiring running six streams simultaneously or something like that um yeah. setting up the, the 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 commentators area and giving the you know the welcome spiel to every player setting up the audio massive thanks massive yeah. thanks yeah george schweitzer is i believe the person responsible for doing the streaming during wtc fantastic there you go a shout out to you my man many thanks yeah, and yeah. probably to commentators uh, as well. They did a fantastic job. I haven't actually heard the commentators. I'm I'm horrific. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know who did it. But many thanks to them. <laughs> I assume it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've literally not had time. I I, I I really am looking forward to going through and watching all the games. Um, but I I just haven't had time yet this week. Everything's been crazy. And what's your um, orientation in the field, like? Um, you know what I'm saying? When you need to go some to some place you've been once before, uh, do you have an easy time to find a way, uh, Christian? Yeah, it was easier this year than the last, but uh, last year, no, uh, two years ago, it was also more, I feel, spread out. We were kind of lucky that we were playing uh, in the downstairs uh, halls and, and we had three games in the streaming room. So, so it became really easy to, to, fi to, to find where to, to be. Uh, but I remember Show that a couple, of, a couple of years ago, <laughs> you guys invited <laughs> me, I mean. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was uh, really easy finding, uh, finding around. And in, if I didn't find it, I, I just followed Sada because he has 
mad skills of knowing everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the captain that you want. Not the best player, not the best, just the guy that knows where he's going. That's, that's all we require. Yeah, the, the captain the hat is a really big hat. You, you have to organize everything. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, I usually just follow my girlfriend around more when I want to know where I'm going. So I don't know what that says about your team, really. Um, <laughs> is Sverre just like the team's girlfriend? He's, just... <laughs> he's the, the, the mother and the wife. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that on his tombstone. Yeah. Sverre, dearest mother and wife. <laughs> 2019, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope he lives longer than that. Yeah. I'm asking you because I got lost there a few times. I, I remember a particular situation when I was walking through the corridor carrying my miniatures with me and I met Tom and he's like, aren't you on a streaming room? And I'm like, yeah. And I confidently continue my walk. And 15 steps later, I'm like, why did he ask? <laughs> and of course, it wasn't the streaming room direction. The one yeah. time that we were supposed to be on stream, we I first went to the like the, the the pairings were put up, and it's like room you know ro row twenty six, and I was like, oh, that's fine, that's where we played the test you know the practice game against Norway, so I know where that is, so I'll walk all the way to the end, get down there, and they're like, the room's changed, man, we're on the stream. God fucking <laughs> damn it! Like, I'm holding two trays, I've got my widgets in my mouth, um, like <laughs> not not yeah. great, not great. Yeah, normally I would say it's an issue, but in case of WTC, it really isn't because the schedule is so relaxed. You have time for everything. You can use the restroom. You can walk with your miniatures whenever you need to. You can eat something. You can take a nap. Uh, you have time for everything, really. Agreed. Uh, the only thing that did hurt a little bit was waking up an hour earlier on the Sunday than the Saturday. Yeah, that's I'm not right. saying that that's something that could have been avoided. I'm just saying it hurt my soul. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I think there's people who didn't learn from uh, Norway two years ago and still fly home on Sunday. So oh, maybe mistake. that's why. <laughs> mistake. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Learn, lads, learn. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so let's get into the meat of it. Let's get into the round by rounds. Battle reports. Um, yeah. Round one. You're coming in and you look at the opponent's team. First of all, I don't suppose you happen to remember if you won tables or matchups, did you? Uh, I think I do. Um, oh, God bless you. Right. So, yeah. So, did you, so which one was it? So, game one was uh, against France Obelix, uh, which is okay. kind of a, for us, I think it's a hard start. You all want, want, always want to, to have some unknown team to, to get like a, a smooth start. But yeah, uh, yeah France is a, is a hard, uh, hard uh, start for us. Is um, Obelix the team one? No, uh, team two. Uh, okay, so okay. The guys well, still, tro still tough, still tough. Yep. Yeah, and we didn't know that. I'm not going to ask them that before the game. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, are you the good ones? No, fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if I remember correctly, we, uh, roll, we won the roll and we chose tables. Okay, so then you have to lead with someone. And basically, first of all, who did you lead with? But second, did you find that you tended to lead with the same person each time? And if so, why? And if not, why not? Uh, I think actually uh, Martin and Sverre, the, the real brain power behind doing all those things, I think they chose differently almost every game depending on who we met. Wow, that's fantastic. I really look forward to the interview with, uh, with Sverre and we'll, we'll ask him about what him and Martin were uh, you know, discussing. That, that'll be great. And so who did yeah. you lead in this particular match? Uh... I don't remember. Like I did my no homework, no but I, I, I did it on like who I played and <laughs> who got first there. I, I like I said, it, it was Sverre and Martin who did everything and told us like, okay, check the, the maps before we start uh, and and choose which ones you want, which ones you really don't want, and then we'll take it from uh, from the pairing process. Okay, um, and we we had. Um a bit of a chat with Kuba and we were asking him like, you know, what table as a Harvey player do you want to see or what table do you really not want to see? Um, so it might be interesting for, for especially the Menoth listeners to think about if you're looking down with the Serenia list, what terrain do you want to see? What terrain do you really not want to see? Is it the same as Harvey or does it, is it a bit different? So tell me, what, what's, uh, what's your thoughts? Uh, I think it depended a lot of what we met because uh, we didn't uh, talk about it too much, but uh, Serenia is incredibly flexible. Uh, I like the guys laughed at me, but I put uh, put plus one on any everything except Grimkin, which was a zero. And if we met Retribution, which we didn't, I had a plus two. So for me, it depended a lot of uh, if I was meeting like uh, Signar or if I was playing Circle or. Uh, 
yeah, actually what I, I, I was meeting, like if I, do I want something in the middle that avatar can, can gaze and, and hide behind or do I want a really open field so that I can run my army because uh, a real shocker here, Menoth is not really keen on having a lot of difficult terrain, uh, <laughs> not, of, uh, not a lot of innate pathfinder. So for me, it was usually uh, give me as few difficult terrain pieces as possible. All right, so you were, you were looking at terrain more in the sense of what can I deny from my opponent's list? You know, what messes with them? And yeah. also, please don't give me rough terrain. And then that combination led to a Serenia table, if we want to call it that, even though really what we're saying is that you're so flexible, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. So it was quite, like different, quite different of, from what we heard about the Harby side of things. So that's great. Okay, cool. So, of course, if I'm at, like, Circle, don't give me any forests. <laughs> that's, that's fair, that's fair. Unless it's Billy, and then he's playing Double Bones, and then you can just pick forests just to rub it in. Like, yeah, should have picked a farm list, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely give him triple forests, just like, even if I was playing Crucible Guard or something, I'd just do it. I'd just be like, ha, <laughs> um, yeah. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so you um, go in against uh, France 2. You're on um, King of the Hill, and yep. you get matched up with which opponent? I played against uh, Thomas Caffaday. I, I speak okay. French, but I'm not going to do it here. <laughs> that's uh, fair, that's fair. Yeah, so he had a Boulder 1 Kruger 2 pairing, which is really good for me. Uh, just It's not because it's so innately good for my list, but it's I have played it enough, and I like almost always win against them, except mm-hmm. when you had Robin on your podcast, and he was like the only Signar who has beaten Signar? me in a really long time, so it was fun listening to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I got a big uh, house in the middle, which was awesome. Okay, okay. So you, you've got you've got a matchup that you really want. You've got the terrain you really want, and I'm going to presume it went well. Um, so <laughs> it, give, give us the round by round. Generally speaking, when we when we're doing these battle reports, feel free to give us sort of minimal um, information on the round if you think it was pretty clear cut. And then at any point when you want to go into some detail, if you think there was an interesting point, or if you if you want to you know focus in on a, on, a, on a particular interaction, feel free to do so. Like it's, it's totally up to you. That they're, they're your reports. So tell us about round one yeah so uh, round one uh, we roll the dice to see who starts and he wins so uh, that was really sad for me but he did the first uh, real mistake of the game and he lets me start uh, and that's uh, another difference between Harby and, and Serenia is that because I have dash my list is super fast uh, so he lets me start I run everything up uh, almost to the middle of the table um, then he starts and he d- does the, the usual Balder uh, feet teleport in the middle of the, the table. So he was like kind of hiding uh, behind the, the house, thinking he was uh, safe. Um, then, um, yeah, yeah, and then I, my turn two, I run everything up again uh, with my feet up. Uh, so because of the forest, I, I can't really run that far. Uh, and I don't know, I think he said he was lucky or didn't measure it, but his uh, both his Ketrix and uh, the Raptor was just outside of gaze. So I was a bit sad of that because if I can gaze those two uh, this early on, it's really good for me. <laughs> just for uh, any listener that doesn't know what the wording on gaze is, can you just yeah. repeat it so they know what they're talking about? <laughs> yeah, so the gaze is uh, one of Avatar's uh, cool features uh, that says that if you use a focus point at any time during your activation, all the models that the Avatar can see that is within eight inches of the Avatar can only walk towards it. Not directly, but you, you can't back out. You have to go, yeah, like the, the old circular. As long as it's closer, it's, it's fine. Right, right. So cool. that's what I usually do. Like if I can get a Colossal or a Gargantian or something and gaze it, he can't back out and then he gets the avatar to the face. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, normally, like for example, if you put something within eight inches of Adjudicator and say, you can only come at me, you can't run away, the Adjudicator says, okay, and then walks forward and deletes said object. So Rockwall. I'm assuming it's only the rock wall that's preventing that from happening. Yeah, Rockwell is uh, is a huge part of that, as well as Army which, 23, of course. Which matchups can get rid of it? Uh, it's, it's uh, of course, Harvey, and it's uh, Silvestro. So that's why I don't really like playing against Crucible Guard. Okay, no no other one? Because obviously, I, I know about the, the those are the two main purification type casters. Is there no sort of like other little ones that pop up that cause issues? 
P. Krios is, of course, one, but uh, I played a lot of P. Krios, so I know that it hurts him almost more than it hurts me to purify, just because all the upkeeps of uh, Krios is super expensive to, to right. put out again. Um, that's the ones uh, that come to my mind. Because okay. there's a lot okay. of things that, that doesn't remove the wall. A lot of, like, uh, Eilish, he removes upkeeps from models, for example, and, and the wall is just something on the table. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the things don't interact. Okay, fair enough. But sadly, he didn't manage to catch the the, the Raptor or the uh, Getterix. And so yeah. what did he do with his turn? Uh, so he starts off his turn with uh, not upkeeping the forest that was uh, base to base with the building that was protecting uh, Baldur. Um, and... Uh, starts to activate his unit so it was uh, it was king of the hill so he was going hard flank killing the objective on my side uh trying to not kill too much on my side just because of my feet and everything in my list becomes really angry if he kills something a lot of righteous vengeance activations uh as well as my feet move so if he kills something a warrior model can walk three inches so i get a lot of like really odd uh threat ranges if he starts killing stuff um but he activates uh, activates uh, Getorix, activates uh, his his units, and I, I'm I'm looking at the table and I see that uh, Baldur is pretty close to the avatar. <laughs> I mean, like uh-huh. just within avatar. So I'm I'm waiting for him to to uh, activate his caster. So he does like everything to to activate. Like Baldur doesn't really need to go first because he kept stone skin on on uh, Lord of the Feast uh, kill stuff. And then I see he's about to, he's measuring his caster. So as soon as he picks his model, I clock over, uh, bring forth the magical eight inch stick. And I say to him, sorry, man, you can't go backwards. <laughs> oh, and th- oh. that's really the, that's the Serenia dream. Like uh, I, I won well, way too much games uh, just on this. And uh, it's always as much fun. Of course, I feel sorry for my opponents because it's, it's a really no you don't don't lie uh, I, I, I do giggling I do. inside you're a pr- you're a grimkin player just in a harby body <laughs> I love Serenia. denial Serenia. Like, that's the, the reason I've been playing Menos so far is that I love denial denial is my play style couldn't he just put a forest on himself and teleports to another forest on the table or what? <laughs> Yeah, but again, you're playing against Protectorates, and there's a thing called, called the Covenant of Menoth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that says so, nope. so, that, so that's the like the super combo is that I gaze the caster and I have the book within ten, so he can't go backwards and he can't cast spells. Jesus, so, yeah, I just it's, like it's to really say on behalf of everybody that I dislike you right now. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm a nice that person. Sounds so rough it's fine. as hell. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so he 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 realized that yeah he can't do anything, so he starts to like use his shifting stones, try to 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 uh, try to make it as hard for me as possible, as well as that he can see that if he kills one of his own um, uh, death wolves, he can get a storm raptor to shoot at Serenia, but she's step seventeen, camping four, and uh, yeah, the, the, the odds end tough, of course. So the odds are not there, but he goes for it. Uh, doesn't kill her. Uh, I have like 10 boxes left. And then it's my turn. I roll for the avatar and I get two focus. So I'm really sad because he can get between two and four focus and I can't fuel him in any way because uh, he killed my hand of silence the turn before. So Uh suddenly it went from like three focus, it's super safe, four focus is overkill. I only have two focus and he's camping like four. But luckily for me, he used all his focus on the Storm Raptor, so it's only uh, Gitterix with full wounds. So I go in with the Avatar to focus, and I overkill Baldur and uh, Gitterix on those two focus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Power 25 will kill casters. <laughs> all right, let's just, again, quickly, for the benefit of everybody, how are we getting to 25? <laughs> so he starts off at 19, uh, battle for uh, 21. He killed something within 5, so that's Hand of Vengeance. So we were at mat 10, power 23, and then you add positive charge. So he's mat 12, power 25. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me he's not blessed. Uh, no, but I have Hex Blast and I have Dispel on the Archons. <laughs> just in case <laughs> just just in case the blessed isn't it just in case 1225 is not quite getting it done so if right. he yeah. upkept his forest would he be safe uh 
Yeah, because then he could run away from the avatar and and get further back. But uh, he he let me start, so I think anyways I would be able to to grind him down. But I mean, getting that start on turn one of the VTC was really good for me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, that's amazing. So that was round one against France, um, and a win by Caster Kill. Cool. How about round two? Yeah. Who did you get, and what were you playing? Uh, so second game we played against Finland one. Uh, and mm-hmm. I played against Samu. Uh, I don't want to try his last name. Really cool guy. Like I can just say that now that all my uh, players' opponents were really nice guys. I had a lot of fun on this tournament. Uh, so if I don't call you a nice guy when I talk about the game, it's because everybody was nice guys. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, uh, I, I'm really glad that you uh, you avoided any drama and just had uh, you know clean, solid, nice opponents throughout. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I can. I, I think I can add that now. I have always a speech I do before VTC games or uh, or tournament games where I said that turn one you can have take backs, no problems. But after, like, if you forgot to deploy a model of power up, no problems. But I like clean games, so so no take backs after uh, turn one. Measure everything that uh, needs to be measured, and let's just talk about uh, anything that might c- come up. So I'll never any take backs, always uh, clean games. Perfect. All right, that's interesting. We had a we had a discussion on a previous episode about what people's uh, approaches to take backs were. I think we were discussing it with Billy uh, after the Scottish Masters, and um, and we have um, you know slightly varying approaches. So that's that's really cool. I'm um, that's interesting to hear yours. I think a lot yeah. of players now have a bit of a spiel before the before the game. You know, it's always like, right, I'm going to re-roll dice, or I'm not, or I'm going to, you know, here's my corpse system, or here's not, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, um, and that's that's uh, I also have that, but that, that those last points is what I add. Like, I, I don't usually hear other people say it, but uh, everybody yeah, always agrees on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, cool. Uh, that's cool. So uh, we got to play against Finland, uh, and I played against a fellow protected player. Who had uh, P. Krios Double Judy and Testament of Menoth in Exemplar theme. And I always happy to see Testament. Yeah, really, really cool lists. Uh, but I could see that they weren't like super optimized, but they were really strong lists. So I, I couldn't, uh, I had to respect them. Um, mm-hmm. So again, I think we got to chose tables. So uh, I got a table which was kind of open, but still some, some forests and some things to hide behind. Um, so I got to start this game. I ran everything to the middle of the table. Uh, no, sorry, he got to start. He got to start, so he got a big forest that was cutting his army in half. And we were also okay. playing uh, the bunker scenario, which was not optimal for him. That's one of the better Serenia uh, maps. Uh, so he runs up, and then I run up and feed turn one. And he understood that he was in big problems. <laughs> Uh, because if he wants to <laughs> contest uh, the flags, he has to put his judicators within charge range of everything in my army. So uh, he goes up, uh, and he never he ca- he can't feed. There's no good feat against me because either everything is immune to knockdown, or I have the book that says immune to knockdown within five inches. Uh, right. So he kills uh, a dervish, cripples another one, and then my turn. I kill both Judas have the monk and a unit of initiates in his zone and score four points. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, that's the, not where you want to be. No, so he, he I mean, said that's exactly that's, where you want to be, but that's not where he wants to be. Yeah, he, he thought it was an, uh, an evenish matchup, but he said uh, in the middle and after the game that that, that was horrible. That wasn't any... He, he didn't have any chance at all. And yeah. It's uh, Serenia is really good into shooter lists and even better into uh, Judy lists, shooter lists right. and Judy lists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in the middle of the game, he's doing some frantic Excel editing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. This is horrible. <laughs> change, change, change. <laughs> Again, the, the power of having a, a relatively unknown caster. Right, right. Fair, fair. I mean, to be honest, I think I would have probably made some incorrect assumptions into your list as well. Um, but it's, um, for you, from your side, it's a real strength, so why not? Yeah, cool. Yeah, sure. All right, so, so he was in a world of pain, and I'm assuming that the following round you closed it out on scenario. Yeah. And how did your team do? I think we 5 0 again, or maybe 4-1. All right, that's strong. Yeah, so a, a, a good start for us. It's a nice confidence boost going in when you you know you've you've got two really solid results in the first two rounds. Very nice. 
Yeah, and for me as well, not playing, but uh, I played round three both games and had a lot of time, so I wasn't I wasn't feeling the fatigue yet. So that was important going into game three. All right, all right. Well, I, I, I feel a story. So hit me with game three. <laughs> Who did you meet and how did it go? Yeah, so game three, we played against Canada Moose uh, on the streaming table. So uh, those games are up uh, or will be up if you want to, to look at them. Uh, I played against a nice uh, guy named Aaron Smith with an Iona Wormwood uh, pairing on Spread the Net. What uh, a boss. What a pairing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Really, really solid list. And I was scared because I've played a lot against Baldur lately, but I haven't played that much against Iona. And, and historically, Serenia doesn't like lists that hit hard and hit precisely because I can kind of death skew a bit and kind of arm skew a bit. But if you can go around those two, it's, it's really hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I get to go first. Uh, again, pushing everything to the middle of the table. Uh, and then he follows up, trying to respect some of my uh, threat ranges, but still like getting ready to, to hit me really hard, as Iona does. Um, then my turn two, I feed, I gaze uh, the Storm Raptor with Avatar, I place my wall, and then I have a couple of monk sidekicks uh, protecting the flanks of the Avatar, uh, because it's really hard putting the, the wall that covers everything because I don't want the Storm Raptor to actually be able to hit me. And with his threat ranges, he can easily fly to the side. So, Are you that concerned about Mat 6, POW 18? Yeah, because disruption also works on the Avatar, even though it doesn't have oh. a Cortex. So if you disrupt it, I can't really remove it. And then he has free reigns over my list. I did not realize that worked that way. Yeah. Um, so I think we kind of agreed that the game was decided when he couldn't kill my Death 20 monk because I feated, which would have let uh, Bridget and Cole with everything like with Prey and Feet and... Uh, oh, Power and, 23. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if he got that into the avatar, he could really mess it up, almost kill it. But luckily for me, he missed and with the rerolls and everything. And when he finally hit the avatar, the monk, uh, I, of course, managed to tough. So sometimes lucky. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes lucky. I mean, yeah. a fully loaded uh, cowl should overkill an avatar, I think. Arm 23. Yeah, he should be straight dice. On yeah. the, oh no, because he's straight dice on the charge, then off two. So it's triple fives. It's power 22, not 23, by the way. Is it 22? I thought it was 23. Yeah, it's 13, 15, 17, 19, and fit. So 22. So I'm wrong on a number of counts. <laughs> um, let's, let's quickly run that back. So we'd come in with a charge on dice off one, doing approximately 10. Then he would come in with dice off three, four times. So 16 more. So 26. No, he doesn't kill it. Okay. So you actually need Bridget's charge. And that's given that, uh, and that depends on if he takes out the shield on the first attack or not. Ah, so it's 23, and, he, and some, how much of that comes from shields? One or two? Two. Two, so it could, it could get pretty good pretty fast. All right, all right. Yeah, or at least cripple it that much that it, like if he takes out the right arm, for example, then I won't be able to, to kill anything back. Yeah. If seven uh, points of his list do that much work against you, you're having a sad time. Yeah, let's, let's agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so the turn after that, when he didn't manage to kill it, I had, again, the POW-25 Judicator, uh, which was able to, to walk into his Storm Raptor. Uh, he had Hermit there as well, so I was really scared, and I rolled three focus for the Avatar, so not all the punch I wanted. But you still, were on dice plus seven, and you were really scared. Uh, because I didn't have any follow-up. My, my army was spread out because it spread the net. I wanted some, some scenario pressure. So I didn't really push everything up, as well as there was a lot of uh, rough terrain in the middle of the board. So if Avatar doesn't kill it, I might have some prob problems. Okay. But yeah. So Avatar, uh, and uh, of course he also had the Hermit, so it's, it's, it becomes dicey. But uh, yeah, Avatar goes in like a champ and kills it so much that he didn't even bother hermiting it. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're in trouble when you don't bother to hermit a gargantuan right okay yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the rest of the game become just me trying to to take the scenario points and deny him and just because I know that in the long term he will grind me down so I need a fast scenario win and luckily for me I score 5-0 on turn 3 or 4 
All right, cool, cool. And Tomasz's pred- predictable question? What's for breakfast? No, how did the team do? <laughs> uh, this one we won three two. Ooh, a close one. Oh, it it became yeah, it became closer and closer. <laughs> That's a bit squeaky. Three twos never feel great, do they? Because it's like oh dear me. Yeah, but we we still had some. I think the games we lost were easily. It was like dicey, so it could have gone both ways. But uh, yeah, they they had really good lists against us, so we were really happy to to close that for the last uh, game of the day. Yeah, three two still feels a hell of a lot better than two three, doesn't it? So let's, let's yeah, not worry sure. too much about the three two. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, how was your sort of um, celebration schedule for the evening? Did you uh, knock back a few beers, or did you go straight to bed with a cup of tea? Or uh, oh, sorry, that's for the very British. Whatever the North Norwegian <laughs> equivalent of a cup of tea is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so of course uh, there were beers after every game because we're always happy to to win uh, and and have good games. Uh, beers dinner. plural after every game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> at, at least at least one. It depends how much time we have. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, uh, but for my part, I had some some sinus infections for like a year and a half, so I don't really drink that much anymore. So I was uh-huh. kind of the lame one going to to bed early uh, after dinner and just like watching some Netflix and and try to relax. But uh, fair enough. Yeah, weirdly enough, I didn't get to sleep that night because we were three zero top eight going the day after, and I got like really nervous, started to analyze, and then you know it's. I, I think I got a couple of hours of sleep. So even though I didn't like stay up late and, and drink, I was still really tired for for the next day. Same uh, same type of thing for me, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm getting too old to get drunk. <laughs> 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 yeah. So um, day one, we were really happy. Everything, everybody did their job, and uh, yeah, it was overall every expectation we had. What's the average age of Norway Munin? Approximately, uh, I think a bit over thirty. I think me and Martin are the ones under thirty, and uh, uh, Sverre Cuba and Juan are about thirty-five on average. Okay. So in, okay. in the low thirties. Low thirties. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, and then we move into round four. Um, so the quarterfinals. Who was your opponent? Or like having? I mean, you mentioned that you didn't get a lot of sleep, and you were looking at the teams and analyzing and so on. What were your thoughts going into into um, into day two? Was there, was there a team that you wanted to see? Team that you didn't want to see? Yeah, we had for sure some some teams we on paper were better against because we we used a lot of time to to analyze lists and and do our our matchup tables beforehand so we could see if there's something that we're scared against or if there's something we should uh, prepare for. Uh, and I. Italy was not one of the, the the teams we wanted to to play just because they had really good teams against us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for my sex, I was most thinking about uh, the games I had this day, like if there was anything I could change uh, or I could have done uh, differently, as well as uh, just visualizing some of the, the matchups that I could get and see how I could I could play them for the next day. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. And so, who did you hit in round four? So we had Italio, Ital- Italy, Mario, uh, and I got to play against a Signar player called Eduardo. Uh, he had a Siege 1 Sloan pairing, and uh, it was on Invasion. So uh, we don't have a lot of Signar players in Norway, or we have zero Signar players in Norway. And I played one game against Siege in Lune, where I got decimated, because I didn't know what I was expecting. So luckily for me, before the game, I had at least played against it uh, once, so feeling kind of confident, but Siege is a monster. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so I got to start again, really lucky. Um, so I push everything uh, up in the middle, uh, trying to, to look at some, some scenario angles, because invasion with two circles uh, at the sides and then uh, the... the the rectangular one in the middle, I knew that I could get a, a pretty fast scenario lead if I get to score on his turn. And as the terrain was set up, I, I, I felt confident that I could score at least one point and then probably score four points on my turn. Okay. Uh, so I push up and I make the decision to feed with Serenia, staying way back, but pushing everything in his face. So Avatar runs up and gazes, 
uh, clipping a couple of uh, of his lights. The archons ran straight to his face, trying to engage everything. Champions tried to hold up um, the, the battle engines, like really up in his face, <laughs> and and just see can he can he deal with it? Uh, if he can't, then I basically won already. But if he doesn't clean it up, I still have some chances with my heavies and and lights being able to uh, to sidestep and and kill his caster, or he has to kill box. So how do Storm Striders deal with champions of the Order of the Wall in their face? They ignore them. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, so, so one was really good for me because uh, on my left flank there was a big house uh, and he went really far with his Storm Striders so I could place my champion who can't be pushed uh, to block him from ever going to the zone with uh, with the Storm Strider, which was beautiful. And the other one was uh, close to his uh, army so I could... Uh, I had one light jack within my reach and uh, the storm strider, so he just punches the, storm, uh, the the champion with the storm strider and then just shoots into the middle of the the, the clusterfuck I created. Fair, fair. Yeah. So really, really well played by Eduardo. I got really sick to my stomach because I saw that if I score one point or if he doesn't kill uh, the sanctifier in front of his face, I will win. Because even though the, the Sanctifier is like mat 6, POW 16, with Sirenia, he becomes mat 10, POW 22. <laughs> but it's yeah, insane. It is. But he, he demolishes my army. He, he kills everything that I put in front of him. He kills all my uh, ways of scoring. Uh, and I am left with half an army, used my feet, and he has everything intact. So... Yeah, I, so I you're went thinking for, it's time for another quick beer. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the smile you get, uh, you you give your uh, your teammates when everything's going good, like uh, to 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 reassure them. My, that yeah. went into a frown really fast. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, but the the big part about his turn is that if you want to kill uh, things in Serena's army, you have to do it in the correct order. And me pushing in his face so hard made him use a lot of clock. So after seeing that he killed my entire army, I saw that, okay, he has probably 20 minutes left after his feet turn. I have to play on clock. And that's what I do. I, I score, start scoring some points. I think I go to 3-0. And then I just have to grind and contest and run and keep Serenia safe. So if you could think of like, just a, you mentioned that you wanted to play on clock. Now, obviously, we've already stated that one of the most important things to you and to most of us is to play a clean game. And yeah. so we, we assume for a start that we're not talking about clock tapping or any other, you know, stupid shit that shouldn't happen. Yeah. So if you want to give advice to a new player who's coming into the game and they're really, like, they're struggling with clock, they're not sure what it means to, like, play for clock and they don't know how to take advantage of a clock lead, what's your advice to them? How do you take advantage of a clock lead, even if maybe you're in a, a, a bad spot in terms of attrition? Yeah, uh, so what you have to do is you have to, to, of course, use your clock because you can see that you're uh, up against the opponent, you have more time, you can uh, do the right decisions. Uh, but uh, what you do is that you just score some, you don't get greedy, you score a couple of points, you, you try to, to make uh, hard decisions for him and then clock over. Don't, don't try to, to score five points or overextend, just get a small lead and then clock to him because of the nature of War Machine. When you get stressed, you will do mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned use your clock. So when you are ahead on clock, you think you should like you should be okay with closing that time gap and not like just doing your turn quickly and then and then really putting the pressure on him. You think you should actually use that extra time that you've got to 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 translate to pressure on the board rather than increasing the time pressure by increasing the gap between your clocks. Yeah, I think the, the the thing here becomes that you you can't do any mistakes. So if I play really fast, I can give him some outs. So if I I play really fast, maybe I don't measure everything with my my caster. I can give him an assassination. Or if I don't contest correctly or see what he wants to do, I, I can give him some some free points that uh, can give him an advantage in one or two turns later. So, so I, I don't use more time than I have to. And in this case, I had half my army left <laughs> a bit un, uh, under that. But I saw that I'm not going to push for his caster. I'm not going to try to kill everything. I'm just going to kill the stuff in front of me and contest and, and be safe with my caster. All right. So in, in other words, basically you, you switch from looking for a win condition to making sure you don't 
present a loss condition. Like, yeah, make sure you can't lose and then just keep pushing forward, you know, methodically, just give him stuff to do, slow the game down, um, make everything a bit tight, a bit awkward, and just yeah. make sure you don't give him a way to win on that turn and just do that every turn and hope that he can't, like, do it within any time. Yeah, correctly. And, and okay. he, he killed most of my army, but he still had my arm 23 avatar in his face. So I, I could use the turns and, like, kill one or two jacks in the turn and, and just grind him down uh, as well as contesting the zones and, and trying to score some cheeky points here and there. Okay, and do you think his targeting was was um, correct given the, the clock situation that he had, or was he still sort of playing an attrition game when he didn't really have the clock to do so? No, he, he played it perfectly. He, he okay. started to run with one of his junior to contest. Uh, he, he focused the things that would have given me points. He, he played it perfectly, but yeah, Siren has a hard uh, nut to crack. And he just ran out of time, or you managed to bring it round? Uh, I don't remember if it was turn seven or not, but I, I think he clocked. And then at that time, he was starting to catch up on points, but uh, I saw that he, he would never make it. Okay, okay. And I'm going to steal Tomasz's question. Uh, how, how was the round for your team? I think it was 4-1 again. Yeah, I think it, we went 4-1. I think Sade is going to school me on that one, but I think it was 4-1 to us. <laughs> well, pl- on the plus side, we've got a lot of redundancy here. We're going to ask everybody, so... Yeah. <laughs> and how did the team do? He just answered. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when I steal your question, this is how it works. I steal your question, you don't get to ask it again. <laughs> uh, it's a double steal. Right. You've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to think about your... You've got to think about a different question now <laughs> for, the, for the end of the next round. All right, so now you're in the semis. And oh, wait, have I got that right? Yeah. Yep, yeah, lovely. You're in the semis and uh, you're, you're in round five. So who are the four remaining teams at this point? Uh, so I think it was uh, it was us, Poland South, Poland Centrum, and uh, in one of the English teams, I think. German. Ger- uh, Germany, yeah, Germany. That's correct. Germany, yep. We, we got knocked out in the previous round. So um, so into the uh, into the Ger- and, and Germany as well. All right, perfect. And which one would you like to meet? And is that the one that you met? No, uh, for us, we're. I like to think we're pretty close with the Polish guys and and have a strong connections to them, uh, as well as me liking to play dark horse lists. It's always scary because Poland is so up to speed on on what I do. Like from the last year, I I have still nightmares about going where a really dark horse list and they know exactly what it does. So uh, we, we, we and of course we we know the Polish guys. We know that they're really strong players. So for us, we were hoping to to meet Germany and also have. Uh, uh, a rematch from the finals we lost two years ago against Germany in the same uh, same room. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, okay. And so instead, you met. Well, did, who did we meet, Thomas? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> no. Who could it be? We we met Poland South. Poland South. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, and who did you meet personally? Uh, I met Pavel, the the Crucible Guard player. What a lovely bloke! That man can roll toughs like nobody I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I watched him tough a halberdier like 17 times. That was amazing. <laughs> it um, was not. Right. It was horrible. Stop it. It was amazing because it was against Tomash and I could see, like, you know when you talked about that smile turning into a frown? Yeah. That's exactly what it was like. He's like, oh, you know, I'm going to kill this halberdier. Oh, he's tough. Oh, he's tough a few times, you know. <laughs> and then after about the 11th tough, it's just like, no, oh, God, yeah, please die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, where's the lube? <laughs> All right, I have a new question. Uh, I would be really interested to hear uh, what did you think about the matchups going into the round? Like I briefly described in our episode with Simon, uh, what did I think about the matchups and how crucial I found the tables to be? But what was your perspective? Please yes. God, just say they were all two plus. Yeah, so so that's I, I'm not including in the process because uh, as long uh, I think I put a zero. Or a minus one on on crucible. No, I think I plus uh, yeah I put a zero on crucible guard and plus one on anything everything. So I was like staying away. I was doing the letting the others do their magic and and giving me the matchups they didn't want. All right, so we'll hear the full story from Sveta, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a good defense you've got there. Whenever you don't know, ask Sveta. Just dunk him in the shit, and then when he comes on, we're going to have to ask him all these questions. And he's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, go, go ask mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ask mom. <laughs> ask your mother. Yeah. Yeah. You're essentially like, it's when a kid asks a story about uh, like how a baby's made. Ask your mother. Um, <laughs> I, I work in middle management. I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> Dodging a, a professional question, Dodger. Right, yeah. bravo. 
Yes. All right. So as I said uh, originally, I didn't want to meet uh, uh, Chris Bogart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I, I think That's it's. Better? Yeah, I think it was just uh, I, I was kind of used to give the others better matchups just because the others maybe have a bit more polarizing lists like Sada with the heavy shooting or or Grimkin or having Harvey like they they have their prefer preferences in what they want to play, but my lists don't really care that much. All right, all right. So you got bossed a little bit, but you know, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Pavel, with uh, Sylvester Lock, I was 90% sure she, he, didn't, he didn't want to play Lock into me, uh, but I never know because I haven't played against her. Uh, and Sylvester with the Purification should be a, a good target for my list because I rely some uh, on, uh, on a keeps. And could he not think that you were going to maybe drop Vlad 3? No, I don't think so. But I can that's tell also, you. Yeah. So we had this discussion with Pavel and basically Pavel wanted to play Locke because he said both of his list can get rid of the rock wall in the key turn when he needs to because uh, Locke's feet removes it. It's a basically a purification. So he wanted to play oh. Locke because it was a safer, uh, f- safer choice for both of his lists. Uh, but I've explained to, to him how the Vlad free works and he was like, uh, after I've explained that he wasn't scared uh, with this list, and on top of that, I told him that Serenia is uh, Christian's preference, so <laughs> he should probably take Sylvester just to have the option to remove Rockwall every round in case something fails during Locke's fifth turn. Yeah, because I have I have uh, ways of going around. Like if I play against Harbi or against Silvestro, I still have initiates and monks that can can stand in the way, and I think Locke would have problems getting rid of Death Twenty monks. So uh, it it was the correct choice from from your side uh, to drop uh, Silvestro for sure. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and 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 as I said, that's why I don't want to play against the Polish because they know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, we had a Serena list in our WTC team last year, so everyone got to play her. Yeah, uh, yeah. So against uh, Pavel, uh, not getting a really good table. It was an okay one. Uh, playing on Anarchy, which is really bad for me against his lists. And as well as that, he got to start, which of course he, he should because of, an, of Anastasia. But this is the game where I thought, oh, damn, this is not like I'm going to lose on turn two. <laughs> uh, Anastasia, what a champ. Anyone not taking Anastasia is doing it wrong. Yeah, for sure. sure. Uh, <laughs> so he gets to start. And of course, being Silvestro, he pushes everything to the middle. Uh, which forces me to feed on turn one, which I really don't like, especially with uh, him being able to to kind of take some pieces out of me and, and still keep really safe, uh, especially on this scenario, because there's no way for me to score fast. Like in the best case scenario, I can score on my flag and maybe kill his objective, but then I am overextended way too much. So I go in with my feet turn one, and then... Uh, like if this wasn't going bad, uh, bad enough, he knows what to do. He doesn't kill a single model in my list. He blinds one of the champions who are up in his face and st- tries to to do some damage on the old one. So, yeah, going to turn two, I have used my feet. Uh, I have some some blinded champions. I can score one point, and he still does haven't used his feet. God, that's upsetting when someone actually knows how to play a matchup in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah, balls. <laughs> so that was super difficult. And again, the, the smiley face went, uh, like, I started with a frown on this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, again, I, I see that I have no options of scoring on the circles because he has his dragon breath, so he can stay and score as well as having the double battle engines to clear. So I have to, to push up the middle, uh, see if I can get some, some assassination on Sylvester, which is really hard. Or again, I have to, to make him use a lot of time and clock to kill my stuff. So this uh, game uh, turns into a turn seven grind, which is really funny because that's the first game I've played in Mark III that goes to turn seven. I never played to turn seven before. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And I don't have the practice of playing those long games. So that was really, that was a really hard match for me. But I I had some, some ins of maybe trying to, to kill Silvestro sometimes because he was camping a a few, uh, a few focus and had admonition on him. But again, I have a hex blast with, 
uh, with a Hierophant, so the hex blast is 12 inches. So Serenia can hex blast from really far away, and and the Archons being Archons, they threaten 15 inches and can fly and have parry, and positively I can have positive charge as well. But at that time it felt too risky, and I started to gain a lead on uh, on scenario and um, and clock. So it's just about putting things in his face so he can't kill too much at the time and just ride it out to, to turn seven. So yeah, spoiler for the game, I won on turn seven, 11 to seven or six on scenario because I could just score on my zone, uh, my flag the entire game and just contest him. Yeah, I believe it was 11 to seven because if it was 11 to six, it would be a scenario in not yeah. the tiebreakers. Yeah, correctly. Yeah, so it become it became like this last three turns or something. He almost he, he had to try to bulldoze some things out of the zones, and then uh, clock over. So I got to to grind him more and more and score more and more points. So I ended up uh, winning on turn seven on scenario. Yeah, Pavel had like five seconds to play two or three rounds. Yeah, so something like that. that. Yeah, so he was like start a turn, fire, bulldoze, go. Start a turn, fire, bulldoze, go. Yeah. I presume he had more than five seconds then, because I couldn't do the fire in five seconds, never mind the bulldoze. Yeah, maybe he <laughs> had a few seconds more, I don't know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter. Like the fire was on the hermit, so if he didn't roll a one or two, he would just add a box and then he bulldozed slamming his model into Arkan, so it didn't took too long. Yeah. So a uh, really hard fought game where I was I felt really lucky, but again, like things didn't really go my way. The, the only thing that I think Powell uh, had to say about it is what uh, the last Archon on one box that just stood there and contested him turn after turn. Uh, but yeah, it was really hard fought game and I was really, really surprised and happy to see that I could actually win this one on, on clock as well. And how did the team do? Uh, we won 4-1. I think so. You you won against Juan, right? Yeah. Yeah, four one. Good job. Felt really good, but now I, I was really feeling the fatigue because not sleeping that much and having two of the longest game I've played in, in maybe half a year. <laughs> it was really draining me. Yeah, but sometimes I've found that when you're really stressed in a tournament, you didn't have much sleep in the night, your body starts to release a lot of uh, hormones like adrenaline and cortisol that helps you stay awake and you become like hyper cautious. For sure, but you also have to try to calm yourself down and not doing stupid mistakes. Like the, the, the last two games I had was like, do everything in the correct order, don't give him any ways to close the game fast and just hope that whatever I have left can, can grind and and give me some upper hand on either clock or scenario. Oh yeah, that's probably something you took from playing Testament. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So yeah, but that was more me clocking everybody else, not me clocking myself. All right. Before we start the battle report, tell me something about the atmosphere around the finals. We know that you were fatigued and you felt it, but how was the experience? What was the mindset? Uh, tell me all about it. We were really happy. Uh, going into to the VTC, I know that some people like saw us as a potential underdog or like a contest. Uh, like well, we could do 5 1, like if we had everything going with us. So we were just super over ecstatic that we actually came to the finals again because it was same table it was the same place as, as we played the finals two years ago so now we had our our time to to uh to get a revenge and and actually uh maybe win this time all right so and as well as that when my game was like when we started counting points and i had everything in the middle of the table the other guys were starting to to come in and was ready to to play so i had no time to like take some, uh, well, I got some time to, to take some air and, and drink, but I didn't have like the, the, the time I had after my previous games where I was done round three and can, could go around and, and reset myself. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Sorry about my brief absence there. I just had a problem with one of the dogs. I'm uh, I'm back and fully in, uh, well, no, I have no idea what we're talking about. What are we talking about? Yeah, you just came in and <laughs> told me we're talking about something cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've dived back in at just the right time. I'll uh, I'll shut up and keep listening. All right. So you were already in the stream room. Your opponents entered the stream room. Tell me something about the atmosphere there. Like it's the biggest tournament in the world. So I think people would be interested to hear about the atmosphere. It has to be stressful. It has to be tense. But maybe it isn't. Like tell me all about it. It's it's so exciting when you see uh, your your uh, your teammates. Uh, starting to win and you see that you actually have a chance 
because this is something everybody prepares for for almost a year. Like every tournament we go to, every game we play, everything is connected to the VTC. Everything is a VTC preparation. This is like the highlight of the year. Uh, people are coming to us, like congratulating us. Uh, like the, the the support we got was really cool. And then we see that we we're gonna meet another Polish team, and again we we consider the Polish guys like close friends of uh, of ours in 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 the War Machine. So I was really happy to to see those guys, and of course being Norwegian, I don't want to to express too many emotions. <laughs> so even though I want to to jump around and scream and hug my teammates, I, I still have to to yeah force myself to to re uh, reset and and keep calm and thinking this is just another game even though it's streamed and there's a lot of people and it's like the most important game of the year, like getting to the finals is insane. It's, it's totally insane. All right. And so what were your matchups? Did you put plus two to everyone or plus one to each of the matchups or, or were you involved uh, in the process? Yeah. I don't remember the lists at head. I don't think they, let's see, it was Poland. They had an interesting double storm Raptor Una two pairing. How did you feel about that one? Uh, really confident. Yeah, that one's fine for you? Yeah. Uh, so Grimkin, uh, not really cool, uh, but it was Old Witch Child, which I know I can play Vlad into, so I think I put down, uh, that as a zero or minus one. Uh, circle, mm -hmm. really... How about the Zal too? Oh, I'm really good into Zal. Uh, I, I don't want to put it as a plus two because Zal has a really good amount of tech and the, the table can also decide, but I have all the tools I need to play against Zal. So I felt uh, confident in that. Um, I didn't really want to play against uh, Tomas with uh, with his Harby because I know from when I started playing New War Machine, like he was one of the greats in Protectorate. So I think it's like seeing a celebrity almost yeah, <laughs> and yeah, having, right, uh, right. having that mental... Uh, like knowing that he's a really good player and everybody telling me that. So I really didn't want that game. And also Piotr with, uh, with again, Siege uh, was not something I really wanted to play just because of the grind we had, uh, I had earlier that day. But it was on a really good table for me. All right. Fair, fair. Which one did you get, by the way? Which table? Uh, I got the one with the house in the middle. So, uh, I oh, you changed the terrain, right? You actually, because yeah. I was thinking you were going to be playing on the same ones that we were on, but you changed the terrain, right? Okay, never mind. Never yeah, mind. We, so we you got one with the house in the middle. Yeah, we, we notified the, the judges that we've played on the same terrain the game before because now it was two games in a row on stream. So we, we didn't want any advantage from playing on the same uh, table. So we asked the judges to shuffle it around a bit. Yeah, I already said it in Kuba's uh, podcast with Kuba, but that's a sign of a great sportsmanship, guys. Yeah, yeah we, good move. Good move. We, we really like clean games. We, we like to have, we don't want to look back and, and, and see that we could have uh, won or lost depending on something not that sportsman like. So, so we want to have it fair for everybody. Yeah. It's the mindset that you want to be better than your opponent, not just win the game. Yeah. It, it becomes like this, this almost like wrestling mind battle where the, the guy who knows his list, know the tricks, done the homework will hope hopefully win like we we don't want any uh the advantages that that gives us the win we, we don't want to to play like that yeah sure nice yeah so again another polish team and uh, this was kind of funny because last year we started off with playing two polish teams in a row plus <laughs> we had a warm-up against the third polish team <laughs> so we play a lot against the, the polish guys on on, on vtc all enough <laughs> uh so again um uh, yeah, we, we had some uh, some luck in get no, we actually did the uh, dice roll to see who uh, choose tables or uh, or uh, matchups. They win, but they actually let us choose uh, the terrain, the, the tables. Madness. Which I, I understand from uh, talking to them that they've been choosing matchups the entire uh, entire tournament and it's been working for them. So so I can I respect it. But uh, for us, when we have that many matchups that are so close. Choosing tables is huge. So we were really surprised and happy that they let us choose tables. Yeah. Um, and then I'm the best counter to Signar in our team. We have a lot of lists that don't want to play against heavy shooting. So again, I was pushed into uh, to Signar and I. it was so early in the matchup, in the process, that I actually got a, a really good table with some, some houses. Okay. Um, so it turns uh, it turns really well for me. Like this time, I I uh, 
uh, or not really, because he gets to start, which is bad for me, uh, because then he can run up the table to the middle, and I have to feed turn one again, which I really don't want to do. Uh, but because of the, the the house in the middle, it really didn't matter that much. So uh, we start off the game with him running into the middle. Uh, I start my turn with pushing everything up, uh, not that far, but the, the archons staying on each side of the house, like looking at everything, but still uh, with my feet, their defense 19 against shooting. So uh, Piotr was really scared of the archons, uh, which was right of him to, to be, but it led to him uh, feeting on his turn two and only like getting uh, both archons, a unit of initiates and one initiate from another unit on his feet. So I, okay. I was kind of surprised he didn't push harder or waited to feed, but with uh, with us playing on Recon 2 and my list being so strong on Scenario as it is, uh, I, I liked the play he was going for. It wasn't what I was expecting at all. Uh, yeah. All right. So this... how, how did that leave you? Like, whenever anyone does anything unexpected, I tend to find myself falling behind on clock just while I'm trying to work out what the fuck's going on. Was that, was that the case, or did you maintain a clock lead? Uh, I, I started to maintain a clock lead, but it was so early in the game that it didn't have that much impact. He still had a, lo a lot of time, and his focus was to try to kill the, the Archons and, and, and kind of survive the Alpha and, and still not uh, lose too fast on, on Scenario. Okay, so Plot wasn't coming onto the radar too much. It was mainly about scenario at this point. Yeah, he, he didn't have my, right. my army in his face, so it was more about killing the Archons and, and stay, staying in a safe distance and, and going the, the long game for him. Uh, so yeah, he, he, uh, he got some focus out his turn. Uh, got like three focus on a charger who could charge uh, the, the Archon on my left. And he had a lot of uh, shooting on the other side. And funnily enough, that's... As I'm a, a cheesy, quirky guy, I said, now I understand why they're called chargers. <laughs> <laughs> the fame is coming. Yeah. So he goes into to the Archon of my left side with his charger. Uh, even with his feet, I know it's kind of hard for him to actually kill uh, the Archon because it's defense 15 in base uh, because he got through the, the, the building. But he one-shotted my, uh, my Archon with, uh, with his uh, Charger, which was really, really sad for me because there, there's so much pressure and it's really good to have those uh, dispel effects against uh, Signar for the, for the plus three armor upkeep they have. Uh, other side, he, he does a lot of damage to the other Archon, but he leaves it on like three, four boxes or something and kills a lot of shield guards. But already that turn, I can see that I'm being sloppy uh, with the Serenia feet. I, I'm not positioning like what I should have done when he killed the one Archon. It's just move the other back out of his feet or uh, or moving it towards the other shield guards because he was clearing the shield guards around it and then started shooting at it. So yeah, I was getting, uh, getting sloppy. Uh, and then uh, my turn after, I see that I can score uh, one, two, three points. Uh, I have to kill the charger in my face, and I have to kill the, the battle engine that's towing the zone uh, at the far uh, right side. But I had uh, an Archon and the champion of the wall, uh, which could get in there with uh, a positive charge from a dervish, which I could run. So in average, I, I should kill the battle engine. Um, mm -hmm. So I run up the dervish, and uh, I cast dash, so, so the... the Champion who was charged by Anastasia the turn before could just ignore her free strike and charge in. So I charge in with the champion, and I was really happy that uh, the the stream was uh, marked for uh, adult content because I was not happy because <laughs> I didn't dispel the Arcan Shield on it. So I charge in, uh, do some damage, uh, and then I charge in. And when I charge him, he tried to to push my uh, my champion backwards, but that doesn't work because they're immune to to being pushed. Then I charge in with my archon uh, and hit it with the dispel. Does some damage. I think it has like ten boxes left. And then he pushed my archon backwards. So <laughs> it's mm -hmm. going from easy clean up, kill two models, score three points to what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, he still has everything online. Uh, I can't kill the charger for the life of me on that uh, left flank, so I have to use the avatar to kill it. So instead of running my avatar and engaging his army and going for that turn three uh, push of just winning on scenario, 
now it's not looking good. At least he's used his feet, but I, I'm not in a position I want to be, and he can start to pick up uh, to, to to kill my army as he as he wants. Uh, so his next turn, um, he can't really kill that much. He kills the Archon on the on the right side, and he kills the Dervish, uh, but he he doesn't score anything. But he sees that Sirenia is just at the corner of the house. So he can see him with like half his army, but I'm like, I'm defense 19 and camping for what could happen. <laughs> so yeah, he starts off with a couple of boosted Thunderbolt shots with only, which only needs like 12s to hit her. And then I realized, oh, I'm in deep shit because if only one of them hits or uh, crit knockdowns me, he can, he can kill Serena without any issues. So again, I was super pissed at myself because I could have used Serena's uh, ability to just give herself free position instead of tough, so I could be uh, just behind the wall. He could never see me. But mm. uh, yeah, uh, Piotr started with really good dice at the beginning of the game, but when it came to, to shooting at Serena, he, he really didn't hit her. He had the, the objective with the rerolls. That didn't help. He needed a lot of boost to 12 or 13. I think he had like three or four possibilities to, to shoot her with Thunderbolts. But he didn't hit it. He, he wasn't even close. His bad really didn't like him. So, um, yeah. Luckily for me, I, I survived, and he used so much to try to kill Serenia that uh, he didn't clean up uh, anything important. So, my last turn, and we have already won the tournament. Already won the VTC. I think we were 3-0 or 4-0 at the moment. We were uh -huh. really tired, and I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the language. I, I'm really tired. This is a Trust grind. me, this is, this is marks for mature audience as well. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm here, so we have to have it that way. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're already one. People are cheering around. Beers are coming. And I'm like, do you really want to, do you want to play this game? Because... Like, I, I can understand from his point of view, it mustn't be that great to win. Like, his team is already 4-0, and, and we're tired. And he's like, yeah, 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 let's play. Um, okay, so I had to kill Anastasia and uh, both battle engines, one of them which the Avatar could punch, again, with inviable resolve, so the Avatar could just walk and punch it and not be pushed back. So I would clear the left zone and get a flag. I would uh, take my right zone and my flag and possibly take the objective too. I just have to kill Anastasia that's uh, in my zone and in my uh, within the flag. So I put 10 of silence, charges her, leaving a boost at 7, doesn't kill it. I have nothing else that can kill Anastasia who is taking a, a, a cab charge from the back. And I'm like, okay, this is going to take another turn at least because I can't score 5 points this turn. So I forfeit the game. <laughs> uh, Anastasia I, I'm just saying put Anastasia in lists guys put her in the list <laughs> yeah so it, it was a really good game and, and Piotr could have really punished me for, for uh, putting Serena out in the open and uh, my dice weren't really good that game as well as me fucking up and then I'm like I, I want to celebrate with the guys uh, he's like you, we're you already won this. fuck yeah I'm out <laughs> yeah so, so I, I gave him the win and then I celebrated with the team <laughs> I heard that Kubo was like, no, I'm playing my game. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, commentators didn't know what's going on because they shook their hands. So because the round was uh, finished, but the commentators didn't know what's going on. So <laughs> they were like, oh, this game is over. So Kubo won on something. And then, oh no, they are still playing. Oh, they probably want to see what's, what would happen if something happened. But no, they, <laughs> they were just trying to finish their game. That's it. Yeah, we had a game uh, like uh, against Belgium where they uh, where Brett was playing with his opponent on minus four minutes of clock or something like that <laughs> because there was a there was a clock fuck up. But everyone coming past was like, "He's over the clock! He's over the clock! Somebody tell him he's over the clock!" Like, yeah. Eighteen players, like, <laughs> and Brett's like, "I know, it's fine." <laughs> yeah, no, but I talked to to Piotr after the game. He he said that he was he was being bust. It was not good. Uh, good matchup for him as well as this table and this scenario uh, I, I'm kind of like in, in hindsight now I really wanted to play Serenia six games and winning six games like having the perfect tournament but there and then I, I had no will left to, to play I just wanted to celebrate with the guys 
yeah, that, that was your choice to make and it's probably fine. I, I'm not sure if it affected uh, anyone's strength of shadow or anything like that. Uh, it it could, but at the same time, like if you're feeling tired and you want to celebrate, you're the fucking world champion, you know, and you can do whatever you want. Yeah, it, it felt almost like childish to, to, to want to play the game uh, at that point because it's not, a, as you say, it's not a strength of schedule thing. It doesn't impact anybody. So I had a really... It does, it does, it could. Well, it could, but I, I didn't care. We were world champions. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that you have to care about it, but I'm saying it's not quite true to say that it doesn't matter for strength of schedule. It absolutely does. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's true. So, so I'm I'm kind of going a bit backwards and forwards. Like if I should have just played the game, but there and there I, I had no strength in me left. Especially when I didn't kill Anastasia with a boosted uh, cab attack in the back. It was like, yeah, uh, you win this game, man. Let's drink beer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, it wasn't a criticism. I was just uh, pointing out it's uh, it's interesting. All right, man. Well, very, very well done. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to hear from you. I'm I'm really glad that you um, that you guys took it down because, as I said, I've said it before, but just watching how happy you all were was actually genuinely pleasing to watch. Um, and uh, and it means that you know if, if I manage to make it there next year, either as an observer or as a player, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you guys there again. That's fantastic. Yeah, and so, I wanted to add that. Uh, I agree. We are very close together with Norwegians, and if uh, w if a team had to take two Polish teams out of the game, <laughs> it had to be you. You know, it's the only way that I'm happy about this. Thanks, man. And the same, like if there was any teams we'd be like happy to to lose against, it would be you guys, no doubt. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, man. I'm tempted to make some jokes, but I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, there's a Norwegian being emotional, and I just I, I feel that since my girlfriend's Norwegian, I'm in a position to take the piss. But <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll, I'll let you get away with it this one time, just once, just once. You're allowed. Thanks. Man. All right, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, I'll see you next time. Yep. Thanks for coming to the show, and thanks everyone for listening. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye.